Aluminium Commerce. I'm Judith Pankamp. Uh, I work at VAF. This uh, lovely historical building uh, in the city center of uh, Amsterdam. Uh, we've been around for 30 years. The building has been much longer. Um, and we work with an interdisciplinary team of uh, researchers, designers, artists, and uh, scientists. Um, we are a future lab for technology and society, and we design and develop for a sustainable and just uh, society future. And we believe that we need to do this together with the, the broader public um, and have them sort of have a stake in this design of the future and have them co-design it with us. So we see, well, the target audience as, as fellow researchers, so to say. Um, and uh, as I already mentioned earlier, we've, um, yeah, looking, we've been looking into citizen science since 2014, and air quality has been a domain that we've been focusing on uh, since then, but it's been becoming more prominent since 2018, uh, when we started this uh, Dutch Skies for Lanselucht project um, together with Eddie Vam, by the way. So uh, I uh, used to work quite a bit with Hester and also with Henry. Um, and basically what we, sort of the starting point of the, the way that we look into citizen science is how can we enable citizens uh, with technology to collect the data and have them uh, become co-owners of the data how does that change the level playing fields? How can you get a seat at the table uh, with uh, decision makers, politicians, uh, uh, polluters? This has been our own uh, sort of research uh, throughout the years. Um, and the, well, this is all in Dutch, but the, the main aim of the project is how can we, it's basically three, three, three folds. So how can we create a context in which uh, citizens, gover governments, experts, and uh, private sector can, well, build knowledge uh, through the collection of data, have a constructive dialogue, uh, and uh, then move to action and impact. Um, and we've been doing that in a whole range of uh, uh, sensing communities, sensing groups. So there are eight, um, and uh, uh, all centered in the sort of the north. North Holland province. Um, and for today, I would like to dive a bit deeper into one particular area, which is uh, the Eindhoven, uh, which is basically, well, surrounded here uh, next to the, the coastal area. And it uh, entails Wijk aan Zee, Eindhoven, Velsen, Beverwijk, and Heemskerk, and a bit of Haarlem. So these are the, the cities that, that uh, are. Uh, well, uh, experiencing health and environmental issues due to the steel factory that is located very close to their homes. Uh, Tata Steel, it's the it's a large steel factory um, and it's the largest CO2 uh, polluter of the Netherlands. And there's also a lot of PM toxic, uh, well, everything knows a lot more on this, but th it's very unhealthy and um, they've known for some time, or the people have done for some time, but more and more evidence has also uh, been presented over the past years that it is indeed very unhealthy. So this is a map uh, that shows a bit of the sort of the yeah the the balance of the industry terrain next to the living area. So you see the the like the black little town Bike and Zee that's uh, basically enclosed through the whole pink, by the whole pink area, which is the, the industry uh, um, terrain. And then all the other, uh, yeah, towns around, surrounding on the right, right side also are quite close. Um, and what we've experienced uh, when we started with the, the project is that there were already concerns for quite some time, but it's proven to be quite difficult for citizens to relates to uh, this idea of a system world, to the institutions that actually make the policy that, uh, yeah, that collaborate with, with the steel factory. Um, and uh, I dove into one of the reports uh, from the province, the, the regional governmental uh, body, and uh, I found this 
visual and I thought like, yeah, well, this actually says it all. I mean, if this is this is a visual representation of how the tasks and responsibilities are sort of dis distributed uh, over different organizations, uh, national, uh, regional, locally, and then it's, uh, yeah, quite hard to understand like, so here in the middle, you see the logo of Tata Steel, which is the steel factory, and then surrounded are all the, yeah, the governmental bodies that are sort of working for with the permits, the norms, the everything related to the to the factory and the, and the policies related to that. So, what is the place for society in such a yeah complex uh, uh, picture? And then this is basically what we started off with when we started the project. So there was already quite some societal uh, unrest, and um, people organized themselves uh, in. An initiative Stofmelder. There was also quite some visual um, uh, dust, graphite rains that uh, occurred every now and then that made it even more tangible that it was an unhealthy uh, living uh, uh, situation. Um, and yeah, basically we we uh, we we tried to figure it, figure out throughout this project it's like how can we uh, yeah so. You have the public authorities, you have the private sector, and you have sort of the civic domain. How can we make sure that that you, as a citizen scientist, as a citizen collective, uh, you can uh, relate to these other um, entities in society? And um, yeah, we set out a a so sensing and collecting data was actually a, a, a means to do so. So we set set up uh, and sensing network uh, collecting. We started off with PM 2.5 and PM 10, and then we changed the sensors. And now we're working with uh, PM 2.5 and uh, NOx uh, palmist tubes. Um, and we set up this whole technical infrastructure um, uh, to also make visualizations that you can look up your own sensor and, and see what the data tells you, but also go back in time or compare it to um, the official uh, I don't know why I did this, but the <laughs> the formal um, sensing uh, devices that are also quite uh, uh, um, well. And how many are there in the area? Do you know about how many? Five. 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 In, in this particular area, it's just PM two point five and PM ten. Uh, in this project, is PM two point five and PM ten, but the formal measuring uh, uh, network uh, measures more. Right. Yeah. But you can compare them, so you can play around with the data. And that brings us to sort of a technical infrastructure, which looks more or less like this. It's very complicated, but what we find out, found out throughout the project is that the technology, I mean, there's always, as you also said, Adam, there's always a critique about the quality of the data and is it scientific enough? And what do you do if the sensor has been moved around? And all these things also, they come into play with our project, but what I find most uh, challenging actually is to design the social infrastructure. And how can you set up uh, this collaboration between, first of all, how can you make sure that you facilitate this local uh, yeah, movement or the, the activity, local, the energy of people being concerned about their, their health and their environment? And then secondly, how can you then set up this context of uh, scientists, uh, designers, uh, uh, policymakers, uh, locally, regionally, national, to actually have this meaningful knowledge building and then have a meaningful dialogue and then eventually move into into interventions and actions. So this this social infrastructure has been, uh, yeah, the real challenge I would say, and um, we. Over the over the years, we've developed quite some things to to facilitate this and make this uh, uh, easier, um, help the process forward. So we developed a handbook in which we uh, uh, well basically describe tips and tricks on how to set up uh, a sensing community. We have a whole sort of yeah cycle of a kickoff event where you uh, where you get sort of set up for this sensing activity. Um, where you make a measuring plan, where you, uh, uh, yeah, sort of agree on the governance as a group, 
uh, and then also data analysis meetings. Uh, you uh, after three months, you get a first look at the data, also together with MVM um, and and data analyst and a, and a data scientist. And then uh, a, a sort of a final event after a year, and then you can together collaboratively decide on what the next steps are going to be. Uh, but also uh, frequent reports that uh, uh, are being uh, emailed to you uh, and, and more a, a dashboard that allows you to dive deeper into the data and do a bit of uh, analysis yourself. Uh, we also uh, embarked upon some sort of digital twin activity, like how can we understand how uh, governments make their decisions and, and, and design their policies and how can citizen science data feed into this. Sessions with policymakers, work fit visit of the Secretary of State, states. But what we've, uh, yeah, I think that's where I where I want to leave this presentation. What we've come to uh, understand is that it's actually so. This this social infrastructure is basically also about sort of shifting powers in in society and and with governments. So we've been doing this project since 2018. Uh, late 2018 until now, and um, well, I think that we've we've have made many many steps on uh, technology and the, the collaboration, but it, so far it's been also quite outside of the institutions, and it still is. Well, LVM is I think uh, one of the exceptions, but uh, for the province, the regional uh, government, it's been very very hard to uh, uh, to create space within their own daily practice and the way that they do their work and the, the way that they use the data uh, to make decisions and to allow space for citizens and these sensing communities to actually have a say. Um, so this, yeah, this uh, figure that I showed on the left, it basically you have to dive deeper into it and to think about the foundation. So what are what are the values that we, that we design our policy uh, for? And this, are these shared values, and what are then the goals that we that we set out as a sort of public civic collaboration, and then uh, design redesign the infrastructure. So, what kind of financial uh, arrangements do we need? What kind of legal framework? So, where we started off with a hey, play around with sensors, and collect data, we now sort of redesigning society. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small task. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, I've seen that. I've done that before. Yeah, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> what sounds most familiar? Well, presumably the uh, Tata Steel has a um, major infrastructure permit, which lays out the standards of the emission limits that they are allowed to make. I mean, it's, it's a license to pollute, basically. Mm -hmm. and and up to a certain level, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's based on uh, it's no longer called best available techniques, not entailing excessive cost, but it's not far off. It. It's, it's another another anachronism like that. Um, but how how far away from the standards are they when you do the monitoring from the standards that they've been set for the for the company? Oh, that's a very detailed question. I I should uh, look that up. But um... I mean, are they apply your are you recording higher levels or lower levels than they're permitted to have? Yeah. So I think what's happening is that there are peaks that are uh, in, how do you say, uh, yeah statistical peaks yeah yeah so I mean there yeah it's just quite a good way to allocate the yeah the whether it's within the permit or not and sometimes yeah. it's not and then they get a fine and they pay and then yeah so there's, there's lots of uh, things that are emitted and uh, not just dust but also other stuff yeah and it's it's just very hard to get your you know to, to find out what exactly is it that produces the health effects. But what we do see is that people are more and more aware that these effects are there, and the politicians are becoming more aware that the people are becoming more aware. If you understand what I mean. Yeah, I do. I, I so, and, and there, there, the citizen science does play a role because then you see, you know, if, if suddenly you see. 200 people having a sensor in your town, then you think perhaps uh, the, 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 the neighbor places, you know, that are created by Tafelsteel 
are perhaps not the only thing I should look at as a policy maker. Yes. Apparently, people are also interested in, in air quality. And, and these steps take very long. Yeah. So it's it's very, because I'm, I'm also involved in this project, and you can see how scary it is for local governments to even come to the meetings. Meetings, meetings yeah. You said, but uh, what if the people want me to promise something? No, these people just want you to listen. Yeah, which is knowledge. different. You don't have to tell them anything. You have to listen. It's like, oh. The steelworks doesn't have a plan to go to carbon neutral. Yeah. So how about furnaces? Yeah. And are they switching to our electric arc furnaces? Uh, yeah, there is uh, the hydrogen. Uh, that's my energy plan. And the reason I ask is because the same story is now running at Port Talbot Steelworks in South Wales, the sort of like mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and the question I was, I, I would guess I was moving towards is how do you talk to other communities that are around Tata Steelworks elsewhere in mm -hmm. Europe? Because I think that would be a great starting yeah. point. Yeah. Because the one in Port Talbot, they've just announced they're going to close the blast furnaces. Yeah. Um, and they're going to put electric arc furnaces in. That's much better from an environmental point of view when you get through to 20,000 jobs. Yeah. So it's devastating for the local community. Yeah. And that's what you also, so it's, there's no quick fix. No. So that's, it's, yeah, it's very complicated. Uh, and I think. And then the other one I was going to say. You, yeah, so we have to. Last question, last question. Yes, it was about health, monitoring health as well. Because I, I, the thing that's always missing for me on these air quality studies is we don't look at health. Mm. Um, and I think there's enough evidence now, simple ways to look at health that would add hugely to what you're doing that would scare the heck out of the local industry. Well, it's, it's just been a health report out, which uh, it actually quite clearly states that people have a lower life expectancy yeah. in the yeah. area. So. But let's uh, oh, um, I like that handbook, uh, how to start an airport community. Is it available? Uh, it is, but it's in Dutch. Uh -huh. But that's going to be a problem because of Google Translate. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can. Uh, and that was that was where at the beginning. And my goodness, it can get a handbook. And yeah. the cost of the technology you have, is it uh, affordable to local communities? Oh, it's still uh, well, it's been funded by the province, so it's yeah. actually funded with governmental money. This project, yes. uh, the, the, the equipment that you have is it uh, can it be can it come to Africa quickly? Yes, build it up also. Well, is it yeah, we, we do use uh, sensors that are uh, uh, off the shelf uh, by a company called Soda. Um, we did I see you use the passenger if you need to tune to Yeah. yeah. And that's PM two point five. No, no, it's no. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Ball, ballpark uh, for a PM sensor, you can have a, a really nice one for fifty euros, seventy euros that order, and these ones were around two hundred, two hundred fifty. The blue one. Still quite expensive. But, still yeah. quite expensive. 